Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlout with rawfoodhealth.net and today we're talking about what happens when you put basically overweight, unhealthy Americans on a healthy diet. Exactly what happens to them? Uh, this is a sequel of sorts to a video I did uh, two or three videos ago about taking a tour of the world, looking at the longest lived, most disease free, most athletically active populations and seeing what macronutrient ratio, specifically their fat intake, they have to help us determine what might be a good area for us to, to embrace. And uh, what we generally saw was they were eating at least 75% of their uh, carbohydrates from carbo, uh, excuse me, uh, at least 75% of their calories from carbohydrates, often as, as far into the mid 90s. And uh, they frequently were, were not exceeding 15% of their calories from fat. Um, this is a ratio that we see as we go around the world looking at the healthiest populations. So, uh, it raises the question, how do we know that people who have not been raised from birth on such diets will see health improvements anywhere near what is experienced by these cultures? Maybe you have to stick with it since you were a little kid. Maybe they just have really great, good genes, which is, I talked about that a little bit in the last one. It's not true. Um, what'll happen to them? So, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's start off with cancer, one of the scourges of the modern world. It will kill 23% of the U.S. population, but as we saw in the previous video in various parts of the world where a low-fat diet is embraced, the percent of people dying of cancer drops to not nothing, but extremely low levels. It's virtually unheard of in Papua New Guinea, for instance, at least among the Highlanders. The people who have adopted modern Western diets are now suffering at levels close to what we experience in the United States. So let's take prostate cancer, which 14% of men will get in the United States in their lifetime. The average American takes in about 33% of their calories from fat, while the average Papua New Guinean Highlander takes in about 2.4%, a huge difference. So what if we made prostate cancer patients go on a vegan diet with less than 10% of its calories derived from fat? How will the prostate cancer of these people fare compared to those embracing a standard American diet with a much higher fat percentage? 93 patients who had refused traditional treatments for prostate cancer decided to take part in this study and adopt that diet. The effects were assessed via a prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, test. As prostate cancer grows, more of it is produced and will get picked up in the test. While the control group eating a high-fat standard American diet saw their PSA score go up 6%, the group embracing the vegan diet actually saw it go down 4%. Perhaps just as interestingly, when petri dishes filled with prostate cancer cells were exposed to the control group blood, it inhibited their growth by 9%, but when it was exposed to the vegan blood, it inhibited it by 70%. In other words, the blood of the vegans, perhaps filled with the substances from fruits and vegetables they were eating and free of the animal protein that the other group was eating, had a very strong anti-cancer effect. And what can a lower macronutrient ratio do for the obesity epidemic? About a third of all Americans are obese now, and another third are overweight. Now, most people, when they try to lose weight, will restrict their caloric consumption or seek to burn off more calories through exercise. But what if we just restrict their fat intake and let them eat as many calories as they want? It's a battle of that traditional macronutrient ratio we see in those long-lived cultures versus something far similar to what a standard American diet looks like. 
despite not restricting calories a year after the start of this study. The vegan group had lost just under 11 pounds, whereas the higher fat group had lost just under 4 pounds. Quite a difference. 40% of Americans will develop type 2 diabetes and have to start injecting themselves with insulin or taking heavy medication. But the disorder is pretty rare among the cultures who eat within the macronutrient ratio we've been talking about, this low fat intake. So what if we do nothing more than force people to eat a plant-based diet that only contains less than 10% of its calories from fat and also make them do a little bit of exercise? By the end of this 26-day study, 20 of the 23 patients who had been taking hypoglycemic drugs, all but two were off the medication. And of 17 patients who were taking insulin, all but four were off medication. And two of the four who failed to get off the insulin had their insulin reduced by 50%. And in all the patients, the average fasting blood glucose level, blood sugar level, dropped dramatically, which indicates that their body was handling their carbohydrate intake dramatically better. What about atherosclerosis, the clogging of the arteries that leads to heart attacks and strokes? It's the leading cause of death in the United States. If you go to the island of Okinawa, which is famous for its large number of people who live past the age of 100, you'll find a heart attack rate that is eight times lower than the United States. The traditional Okinawan diet provides just less than 6% of its calories from fat versus about 33 for the average American. So if we just restricted the fat intake of the Americans, would we see a reduced risk of heart disease? Let's find out. 177 heart disease patients who had been counseled that they needed a heart bypass operation were put on a low-fat vegan diet with less than 10% of their calories coming from fat. Although all of these patients were considered at high risk for having a heart attack, there were no heart attacks. There was one stroke, an uh, incidence rate of 0.6%. Among the 21 who did not embrace this diet, 13 or 62 percent had heart attacks or strokes. So basically, the low-fat diet saved a lot of lives. Interestingly, not only did this diet stop the buildup of plaque and stop the chest pains that were uh, causing a lot of discomfort for these patients, but the diet actually reversed the plaque buildup. These arteries had blood flow increases that basically made them like the arteries of someone who is decades younger. So whatever kind of diet you eat, whether it's a raw vegan diet or something else, it's probably a good idea to keep your fat consumption relatively low. We don't know exactly what number is ideal, but we can say that as your fat consumption rises, certainly um, past the teens, you are going and you're in therefore your carbohydrate intake is declining, you're probably going to see health declines. It makes sense to eat the macronutrient ratio that has worked so well for populations around the world and has been shown to have very similar life-saving effects, health-improving effects among Americans. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the like button, share this with your friends, leave me a comment below. And if you want to know how to thrive at a whole new level, how to feel amazing, then check out my book, The Raw Food, uh, the Raw Food Weight Loss and Vitality. It's helped a lot of people, it can help you too. See you later.